Chiriclo's gaze and smile captivate the smitten Chiron, showing us how Nama, the sister of Tubal Cain, made it through the flood. To Nama, Ham is not really a friend of the line of Cain, but rather a useful tool to further its resurgence and triumph. Nama will bide her time, make it through the flood, and at the right moment show her true colors, emerging from her charade fully armed from the head of Zeus as Athena, ready for the post-flood battle against the line of Seth, the Yahweh-believing children of Noah. The meaning of Athena's birth from the head of Zeus, full-grown and fully armed, continues to baffle scholars. Failing to make the Genesis connection, the scholars do not recognize Athena's birth as the triumphant unveiling of Nama in her true character after the flood, as the inspirational mistress of the resurgent way of Cain. The scholars need to spend more time studying Genesis. The birth of Athena full-grown out of Zeus takes us back to Eve's birth full-grown out of Adam. An event depicted often in Christian art. The vase paintings of Athena being born full-grown out of Zeus were meant to evoke the image of Eve being born full-grown out of the serpent-friendly Adam. We shall see that the unmistakable message is that Nama, by her title Athena, is the new serpent-friendly Eve of the post-flood age. After surviving the flood aboard the ark as Ham's wife, Nama planned to bring back to mankind the fruit of the serpent's enlightenment to rejuvenate the way of Cain. Here she holds the staff of the two-headed serpent. The two heads of the serpent symbolize the serpent's rule before the flood and now the serpent's rule in the post-flood age as well. And so her dramatic springing forth from Zeus, full grown and fully armed, signals not her birth, for she was born of her mother, Zila, before the flood. No, Nama's sudden appearance from the head of Zeus heralds the triumphant rebirth of the way of Cain after the flood. This face painting of her rebirth shows her direct connection to Cain. Hephaestus, the eldest son of Zeus and Hera, corresponds to Cain, eldest son of Adam and Eve. Cain is the obvious artistic choice to herald the rebirth of his own line after the flood. Cain looks to be saying of Nama, she is truly one of our own, loyal, destined for greatness. On this face, Hephaestos, the Cain of Genesis, bears witness to the triumphant rebirth of his own line after the flood in the person of his direct descendant, Nama, adored of the Greeks by her title, Athena, the Immortal One. As Christian art pictures Eve heeding the serpent in the garden, so Greek artists picture Athena, Nama, heeding the serpent after the flood. Note that Athena's spear, a symbol of her power, originates as a branch of the serpent's tree. 
In Genesis, God condemned the serpent to crawl on the ground. On your torso shall you go, and soil shall you eat all the days of your lives. Genesis 3:14. After the flood, through the inspiration of Nama Athena, the resurgent way of Cain exalted the serpent. Here the serpent rises to meet Athena's hand. Greek artists made certain there was no mistaking Athena Nama as the new serpent-friendly Eve after the flood. Here she holds the serpent, fringing her cloak, while wearing a crown of serpents. Instead of the serpents being under her feet, they appear around her mind. Nama, Athena, has the mind of the serpent. Here, Nama, Athena, holds the globe as the serpent rules from above her head. On her gold and ivory Parthenon idol image, the ancient serpent rises up next to her as a friend. In Athena's right hand, she holds Nike, or victory. The meaning is simple and direct. This woman's friendship with the ancient serpent has led to mankind's victory. Here the serpent looks up to Athena as its friend and ambassador. And Athena acknowledges the honor by caressing the serpent. On this sculpture, Athena and the serpent join together to kill a God-fearing son of Noah. On this vase painting, we see the aegis, or goatskin, of Nama Athena as serpent fringe. In the midst of her goat skin, she wears the Gorgon Medusa, the head of serpents, again symbolizing the source of her authority. Nama cannot lead the way of Cain to triumph in the post-flood world by herself. To secure humanity's adoration, Nama will first seduce her own offspring away from Ham and Noah's side of the family. In this ancient Sumerian depiction, recall how Nama holds the entwined two-headed serpent signifying the serpent's rule over the pre-flood age, and now over the post-flood age as well. This important symbol she gives to her son Cush, whom the Greeks called Hermes. Thus, Nama's son, Cush Hermes, becomes the high priest of the resurgent way of Cain. But Cush in addition to being Nama's son, is also Ham's son. Greek art tells us that Cush rejected his father, his grandfather Noah, and his other Yahweh-believing relatives, going the way of Cain with his mother. Cush wanted his father, Ham, out of the picture. On this vase, Cush, Hermes, carries his son, Nimrod, whom the Greeks called Heracles. Cush, Hermes, flees from the influence of his father, Ham Chiron. Note that Cush, Hermes, carries Nama's two-headed serpent staff.
Ham stands puzzled on his side of the vase, gesturing as if to say, Hey, Cush, where are you going with my grandson, Nimrod? On his side of the vase, Cush, with wings on his feet, looks back as if to say, Sorry, Ham, I'm gone. Nama's bringing back the way of Cain and the serpent's enlightenment. Nimrod and I are going to be a part of that. But where exactly is Cush headed with Nimrod? Cush is hurrying to a special ceremony to re-consecrate his son, Nimrod, to his mother, Nama, to the serpent system and the way of Cain. Gaia, or Earth, symbolizing the will of mankind, presents the child to Nama Athena. Cush Hermes is pictured above the child, sanctifying the ceremony with his serpent staff. Cain Hephaestos stands to our far left. Nama's bird, the owl, brings the wreath of rule toward the child. As this is a great victory for the way of Cain, Nike stands behind Nama. To our right sits Cain's wife, Aphrodite, unnamed in the book of Genesis. On this base painting of Nimrod's reconsecration to the way of Cain, the child reaches out to his grandmother, Nama Athena, as Cain Hephaestos looks on. Nimrod is a direct descendant of Cain through Nama. On this depiction of this most significant ritual, Cain Hephaestos looks on from our left, holding his tongs as the child, Nimrod Heracles, reaches out for Nama Athena. Behind Nama, we see a new figure, a half serpent, half man, called Kekrops. He represents the ancient serpent becoming transfigured into Zeus, the serpent-friendly Adam of Genesis. Paul wrote that the ancient serpent of Genesis is transfigured into a messenger of light. Zeus in Greek means light at its deepest level, the actual moment of lighting up. That moment of enlightenment took place at the serpent's tree in Eden. On this face, the transfiguration of the serpent into Zeus is in progress but not complete. Kekrop's presence at the ceremony shows us that the resurgence and ultimate triumph of the Way of Cain is well underway. On this terracotta piece, Earth hands the child to Nama as Kekrop's puts his fingers to his lips, urging silence. The rebellion, the centrally the resurgence of the Way of Cain, must remain a secret until the time is right. Within the veil of this secrecy, Nimrod Heracles will grow up in the care of Nama Athena, ensconced in the way of Cain and protected by the serpent until the time is right for open rebellion. The time will be right when Nimrod Heracles reaches manhood. Led by him, the way of Cain will overcome by surprise Noah's Yahweh-believing sons, often depicted as oblivious to the threat. In this scene, the winged figure Hypnos has put a Yahweh-believing son of Noah to sleep, and Heracles attacks. <laughs> 